So why are so many rejections happening at the Hyderabad Consulate right now? In this video, we're going to try and find this out and also share with you some unique interview questions and trends specifically for the Hyderabad Embassy. Also, I have with me a student who is sharing his experience of getting his visa approved at Hyderabad not in the first, not second, not third, but fourth attempt. It's really, really interesting. Keep on watching. Hi guys, my name is Shachi and I'm a travel and a visa coach. On this channel, you'll find lots of useful videos on the US visa process. We have a dedicated playlist for fall 2024, so make sure to check it out. We also have a WhatsApp community, uh, which is going to help you crack the F1 visa interview this year. So make sure to join the WhatsApp community. So let's come straight to the topic and discuss why so many interviews were rejected at Hyderabad Consulate this year. And looking at the interview questions and answers, there were two main trends that we noticed. Number one, the volume of interviews conducted in Hyderabad Consulate this year was much higher than that at Delhi, Mumbai, Chennai or even Kolkata. This is because more number of slots got released at Hyderabad Consulate for fall 2024. Now, when the number of slots are more, obviously the number of interviews are conducted are being going to be more. And with more number of interviews, you do hear about more rejections because F1 visa interviews have a rejection rate of around 35 to 40 percent, which means that typically about one in four student going for the F1 visa interview is likely to be rejected. So with more volume of interviews, automatically the number of rejections is also going to go up, which is why you're hearing, reading and listening to more number of rejections from Hyderabad Consulate. But if we compare at a percentage level, the rejection rate is very, very similar across all the consulates in India. Number two, now this insight is really interesting. What we saw is that the F1 visa interviews in Hyderabad consulate this year followed a very casual and a conversational approach. Now when I say casual, it doesn't mean that the interviews were easy or you know there were no questions asked. What it means is that other than the main question about university course and funding, Students were also being asked questions about their personality, their likes, dislikes, their plans, their ambitions. And all of these type of questions require you to think on your feet and to give the answer right then and there without any preparation. And generally speaking, I think this is the type of interview questions that many students are not really prepared for. So in this video, we're going to share with you these questions, also share with you some tips for interview preparation. So let's get started. So, analyzing the interview questions, we have classified the questions asked in Hyderabad Consulate into four areas. First, the casual conversation questions. Second is questions related to past education. Then comes related to course and technical. And lastly, about the university. So, we'll take each of these categories and let's look at the question. So, starting with the casual conversation questions, these were some of the questions that were asked. What will you do in US other than studying? What do you hate about your job? What is the most challenging experience you've had in your life so far? What do you not like about US? What are your weaknesses? What are your strengths? What is it that you're going to be adding value to, to your US university? Now, as you can see, these are the really the out of box questions. And the pro tip to prepare for these is first to remember that there's no wrong or right answer as such for these type of questions. What is important is that you are able to speak without pausing, without fumbling, or without taking too much time to think. And number two, you have to present the answer in such a way that it doesn't really highlight any major weakness or flaw in your profile. For example, when asked, what do you hate about your job? If you are gonna say something like, I really hate that my job requires me to work for eight to nine hours at a stretch. You are indicating to the visa officer that you are probably somebody who doesn't like working long hours and may not be willing to put in all the hours required to study for your masters or for your PhD in the US. On the other hand, if you follow a neutral approach to answering such questions, probably you can say that I really like my job, but I am not very happy about the fact that I am limited to a certain type of projects or you know, working with only one type of client. And I really want to broaden this exposure and get to work on more number of projects or more number of domains. Here you are showing that, okay, there is something we are not too happy about, but this is something which you are willing to work on, willing to figure out. So, this is just an example, but the bottom line is that when you're answering such type of personality driven questions, remember that you need to think on your feet. There's no wrong or right answer, but you need to answer in such a way that it doesn't highlight anything negative about yourself. Now, at this point of time, I want to tell you about our flagship program, the seven day course in which we prepare you thoroughly for the visa interview. And this has four mocks. And the reason we have kept four different mocks is that each mock is going to train you to think. 
not just repeat the answers which we structure for you. So this is really important given that F1 visa interviews are becoming more and more conversational and personality driven rather than the standard questions because somewhere visa officers have also realized that people are going to come prepared for these no matter what. So even if they ask, they are going to get answers which are prepared and rehearsed. So do take a look at the seven day program. The link for this is right below. We have two mocks in this which are dedicated to prepare you for the consulate that you're going for so that you're ready to face interview as per your location. The second category of interview questions that we saw repeatedly in Hyderabad was related to the past education. So academic profile still has a lot of importance in F1 visa interview. Even if you have worked for two to three years, even then you're being asked academic questions. And some of the common questions were, have you done any research in your undergrad? What was the finding of that research? In your four years of study, did you have any failure? What was the major in your bachelor's? Now keep in mind that these were some of the unique questions. Apart from this, people were also asked the normal questions about CGPA, backlogs, what were the subjects they liked, they disliked, and about the final year project. Now do keep in mind to brush up your undergrad or your master's subjects. And the easiest way to do this is to pick two to three topics that you really liked, that you really know well, and whatever questions are being asked about your undergrad, answer in such a way that you are talking about those particular topics. So that even if any follow-up questions are asked, you are still able to answer them. The third category of questions that we observed was about the university. And here also there were some tricky questions that we saw. So the main questions were, why don't you choose other university instead of this? Tell me something about this university other than the course. I think they just got tired of everyone talking about the course. What was your second priority after this university? Compare X and Y universities for me. Is there any reason to select this university? So like you, like you can see, other than the typical why this university questions, a lot of other add-on questions are also being asked. So it's good to do a thorough research and have a complete idea about your university and everything that is offering you. We in fact have a dedicated video right here. This is called Why This University? And this video will tell you how you can do the research about the university, also how to frame the answer with certain do's and don'ts. So after you're done watching this video, do check out the Why This University video. And lastly, coming to the course. So questions about the course and technical questions were also asked in Hyderabad. This is the second major trend in F1 visa interview we've observed this year, that technical questions have become more and more common and almost every second, third interview has at least one or two technical questions in them. So let's look at the course questions. The course questions were, which field in AI are you going to do your master's in? Have you enrolled for the course? Are you interested in research? What are your first semester subjects? When is your course start date? Uh, what is your major in master's? Explain how your first semester subjects are gonna be useful for your career. Is there a thesis? in the program, which domain would you like to focus on? Tell me about your curriculum. What is your master's program about? How is your master's related to your bachelor's? So these were the typical course questions. We also have a dedicated video which will help you structure answers about your course, curriculum, subjects. So this video is called Why This Course? Do check out and watch it after you're done watching this video. So this is all the insights about Hyderabad Consulate. I hope that this has helped you. If you have any more questions, feel free to leave it in the comment section below and stay tuned for the next part of the video. I have with me a student and he shares his experience. It's really, really interesting. In the last one year, he has faced three rejections. And in his fourth attempt, this time at Hyderabad Consulate, he got his visa approved. In fact, he was one of the students who worked with us for the preparation and was kind enough to share all the insights and all the useful tips so do give it a watch. Congratulations on getting your visa approved and it's good to see you on the other side. So how do you feel right now? I'm, I'm feeling I'm feeling really happy. I didn't knew that uh, I would get my visa on my fourth attempt. Uh, as uh, Many of my friends who were trying, uh, they are on their fifth and sixth attempt and I was like, maybe I'll have to go to, through several uh, visa interviews to get mine. Or maybe just luck. So getting my visa right now, it's kind of, I'm not into, I'm not thinking into that feeling even now. It's like unbelievable. So this is the fourth attempt, right? Yes. Okay. So what do you think was different this time? I feel like the preparation was very, uh, has a, had took a very drastic change this time. 
the past three uh, attempts, I felt like uh, I was doing, uh, I was filling out my DS 160s, preparing for interviews. And I was feeling like uh, I didn't, I'm not doing anything wrong. Like uh, whatever information I was putting in my DS 160, it was not wrong, but it wasn't right. I got to know that after uh, our first session, wherein you explained me clearly that uh, filling out DS 160 is very important. It's like our biodata that the officer will be looking at. And according to my biodata, they will be asking the questions. It's not like set of questions that are being prepared for us. So uh, after preparing what is 160 and having a more session, I got uh, like, I felt really confident. And I knew that this time it would be like better than the last three. I didn't know if I would, I would uh, secure my visa. But I felt confident and I was like, uh, I, I thought that the odds were, odds were in my favor. Okay. So for you, I think there were two things which I remember very clearly. One is that these rejections were quite close. It's not like, okay, you tried for a very long time, right? Yes. Rejections were quite close to each other. Second, yes. there's a lot of switch in the university, right? You changed, then you went back to your yes. original university. So I think this is really important because this is what scares people that if I have back-to-back -back rejections, I can never get it. Or if I'm yeah. going back to my university, I can't get it. Yes, uh, so what do you have to say about this? Like people who are in a similar situation. Ma'am, I feel like changing universities can be done provided it should have a, a very strong reason behind that. Whether you being not being able to uh, research the university the first, for the first time or having any issues like not having uh, not having that college for that particular intake. Maybe changing the university is right, but I don't suggest changing university once we have, you know, done proper research. And if you're getting a very good ranking college, I don't think there is any reason to change our universities. It kind of uh, ticks off the officer that we are trying to go for an immigration intent. Apart from that, I switched back to my original university just because uh, I was really uh, interested in, uh, to go to IIT Chicago in the first place. Apart from that, I just switched for the intake purpose. As I, I was, I, I told you that I am a working employee. I got my sabbatical for two years. Yeah. So I, I failed to convince my company back then. So I took this... Uh, uh, this step of change university due to yeah. I was being desperate and all. So you changed the third attempt just because of timelines, not because the university was better or anything. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. And that's the why next, the back. university sure. I changed to was my second preference. Out of three admits I got, mm -hmm. it was IIT Chicago, Lawrence Tech, and uh, University of Dearborn. So these three universities, uh, I was, you know. They were very closely, uh, very close enough in terms of course curriculum. But I wanted to go for IIT Chicago. Right. So this time for when you were going for fall and you had the time and you had the admit, so you decided to go back to your yes. IIT Chicago admit. Yes. So coming to the second thing that I wanted to discuss with you about giving interview in Hyderabad. So uh, I think every year there is one consulate which becomes like, you know, the one where people are scared of. Yes. And sometimes somehow Hyderabad is like the one where people are really scared. They are saying there are a lot of rejections. So yes, what did you observe on your day of the interview? How many people were getting approved versus how many were getting rejected? Ma'am, I would say it was kind of 50-50 because, because it, it really depends on the student. Because I have seen people fumble, get nervous a lot at the counters and then get rejected. But I've never seen a candidate who was... Uh, confident enough, you know, conversing with a visa officer is important rather than asking, answering their, their questions like a Q&A. Uh, coming to the Hyderabad Consulate, uh, I got rejected at Hyderabad Consulate on my second attempt. Okay. <laughs> but, oh. but even then, I felt like I would, I, if there was one single question, if I answered that uh, better, I would have got my visa in the second attempt itself because Hyderabad consulate is the consulate officers are very generous. They are very you know, down to the people. They try to con con uh, converse with you rather than asking any tough questions. 
they want to know what what is it that makes you go to america why you are going for this course and all mm. i feel like uh, <laughs> these officers get a bad reputation because of this because there is some part of uh, some uh, you know fault at our part as well because we get nervous we think that uh, we have a misconception that we might get rejected anyhow because there are certain slots for uh, rejections and certain slots for approvals and all but that's not the case ma'am so which was that question in your second attempt which you feel was the reason for your rejection the last final question that i failed to answer properly was why this course now Okay. So this I got the second interview basically. Yeah, second interview. Okay. Hyderabad council. So why? I got confused as to the question that why this course. Okay. Wherein I answered that question previously, I thought okay. she is asking again just to get oh, clarity so, on oh, my part. They already asked you why this course, and again they asked you why this course now. Yeah. Okay. Got it. And you gave the same answer twice. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay. So that was the second attempt and then fourth attempt again you went back to Hyderabad. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Can you tell us a little bit about the setup? How is the general flow of things? How much is the waiting? How many counters did you observe there? Yeah, ma'am. As opposed to few other consulates have visited, Hyderabad consulates has this follows the strict time slot, ma'am. Uh when I have uh, previously I visited uh Chennai consulate and Mumbai consulate for my previous attempts. Wherein, if we went earlier than our time slot, they would allow us in, inside. Okay. But in Hyderabad consulate, if my time slot was ten fifteen, then I have to be, be there by ten fifteen. There is no in between or afterwards. Okay, so no use coming early. Basically. No ma'am, no ma'am. Okay. Even it, you might expect getting a little late also. Okay. But uh, because my time slot was ten fifteen, I was there by ten fifteen, but I got entered into the consulate. Uh, around ten forty-five. Okay. Yeah, because there are there were a lot of students, a lot of applicants. Mm -hmm. When compared to the last year, last time I visited Hyderabad consulate, uh, and when we go inside, they check our uh, passport, the biometric sticker that gets pasted behind the passport, and then we wait in. There is two. There are two waiting lines inside. Initially, they make us wait before the security check. check. And after the, after the security check, you get to get into another line that enters to the main building. There we have around forty counters. Forty. I believe. Yeah, but uh, most of them are in inactive. Oh. Okay. And I believe that uh, fifteen or twenty are active, actively being used. Okay. And uh, the the you know the process is very quick once we enter the main building. You hardly uh, officers are taking hardly one to two minutes for the interview. Okay. Yeah, and uh, how much was your waiting before you actually appeared in front of the officer? Yes, ma'am. Uh, I was third in the row. Like every counter has three people waiting ahead of it. Okay. Apart from that, uh, the work, the smooth, there is a smooth flow of things. There is no delay in uh, the questions, the, the interview, and all. Apart from that, if our documentations are on point and everything is sorted in my in our documents, I don't think there will be any delay in the process. So 10.15 you entered. What time did you come out? I came out around 11.30, ma'am. Oh, wow. So within like an hour, you're like done, essentially. Yes, yes ma'am. Yeah. yeah, that's super quick. Because I've heard in Delhi, people are waiting for two hours almost inside. Yes, ma'am. That okay. might be the case in Hyderabad also, but uh, because one of my friend he he had a similar uh, encounter the next day. Okay, and like he, had he to... waited for an hour, one and a half hour. Okay, so it varies. Could be varies. Quick varies from day to day. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Uh, were you? Did you see anybody whose documents were being checked in the sense at the interview counter, like financial? Yes, ma'am. I did. I did notice two to three question. Uh, students were questioned on the documentation. Okay. Like uh, they did ask them to, you know, uh, show the fundings and all. His officer asked show funding. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Okay. Apart so from that, uh, there were not many of such cases. Okay. Yeah. So two to three, as in you must have seen about 10, 12 interviews out of that two to three. No, asked. I have seen many, ma'am, actually. Where the waiting line is just in front of the interview counters. 
okay and i was very keenly looking about how the interviews were going how many were rejected okay okay yeah so yeah. that's the reason why i told you earlier that they're 50 50 and uh, the most of the time i i seen uh, pe- uh, people getting rejected because of their nervousness and the inability to answer the questions okay and Understood. like they're giving test test book answers if you know what i mean yes like they're okay. being trained and then they're going in the delivery okay. they deliver the answer in this topic again okay they don't elaborate okay so either two short answers or answers which look too memorized yes ma'am exactly okay understood and once in a while visa officer throws in a question that doesn't relate to your studies hmm in general like uh, i was asked at the end that uh, what is that one thing that you would be doing in uh, illinois hmm. when you're not studying okay okay so just a casual question casual question what so i was want? like uh, i i definitely didn't uh, you know impress her with my answer but <laughs> i told her that i told her that uh, i would be visiting places would be you know making friends getting myself exposed to the new culture that i'm not aware of okay and uh, that uh, giving that answer she got a little bit you know uh, worked up and she was like you know you people don't uh, try to enjoy the studies you just keep go you go there you keep uh, working hard and all she was like complaining go go enjoy a little <laughs> <laughs> but that's what you said right you want to go enjoy yeah. okay exactly yeah but i was too focused on the interview rather than you know enjoying the uh, con- conversation but end, right. at the end she lightened up the mood so i was like uh, smiling and laughing at her right. so that's when i went, got to know that this time it is being approved got it so yeah. basically they want an overall assessment of you as a student yes uh, so a mix of your ds160 the core questions and some just light like conversational questions that's being exactly. got did you hear any unique questions uh, being asked other than the normal why this course by this university anything with yes, sound uh for my fourth interview i was being asked uh, uh, questions like uh, how many years of experience i was having mm-hmm. and uh, what will i be doing after my studies will i go for my, my opt cpt and she was very you know uh, pressing me towards this interview will you uh, will you go for your opt and i was like no ma'am i want i would like to come back to india as soon as i complete my studies so she's mm-hmm. like you're spending so much of money on your studies and you don't want to do opt why is that is there a particular reason behind that so i was like ma'am i'm on a sabbatical i'm going back to my country just to join back my job so, so she told me that they they might like you very much if you there uh, welcome you back so i was like yeah ma'am and i gave her a smile yeah. she like good and then uh, three times the same question you essentially have to stick to your ground yes exactly ma'am the testers the testers testers yes yeah and uh, she even asked me a question wherein she was like yeah uh, in my uh, i20 i was going for construction management but the course code in the name uh, came out to be construction engineering yeah so there she got confused and she just clarified it with me that if you are going if you already have a masters degree in civil engineering you mm. can you could have gone for construction management why are you going to engineering again then i mm. then i explained her that it's the the college college has printed it out like that but the course is in uh is the course is construction management only okay mm-hmm. yeah so she was like okay so you want to go improve your management skills right and she was like yeah ma then name few go subjects that you are interested in so i told her that i have been interested in few subjects and there are few softwares that will help me you know manage my construction projects and it will help me improve my construction time for the time of completion of projects and all and she was in the first beginning few questions she was very you know uh, stoic she didn't uh, give any expressions i was kind of scared yeah. and i was praying to avoid her entirely because i have seen people getting rejected at her uh, counter okay you didn't want even to go to... no no mama even requested <laughs> the, the officers to change okay. my line okay there was an indian uh, uh, indian coordinator 
counter. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Indian officer at the sec- next counter. My okay. counter number was 36. And 35, there was an Indian. Okay. She was a female. And she was approving uh, most of the cases. But I didn't notice that the people were explaining better. I mm-hmm. thought that she's approving just because she's Indian. But I've seen people, uh, her reject few people as well. Okay. So I just requested the people to... Yeah, I requested them, but they didn't. They were like, there's camera here, cameras here. You cannot, it will be seen as an illegal activity and Mm -hmm. all. And so I was like, let's hope for the best. Maybe fifth is my lucky lucky number and all. I went to her. Everything went great, ma'am. So, Vivek, this is a very important point. We get actually getting this question a lot that can I change my counter? Because people already know, okay, this counter, this visa officer is sitting and they already have a perception. Yes. So, they're like, okay, I don't want to go to counter number 34. Can I request them to change? So, what you observe is that's not possible, right? No, ma'am. They don't encourage that. And uh, everything is being recorded, What whatever is happening inside the embassy. Hmm. So, even if you don't listen to them and change the line in between, they might cancel your interview altogether. Oh, so if they observe you yeah. doing such things, they might just ask Yeah, you everything speak. is recorded. They monitor everything. Right. That's that's important. I think one should be really careful to not yes. you know do such small mistakes. and Even that thought crossed my mind in between, ma'am. Like when they were not, uh, you know, listening to my request and please, I thought of just switching the line in between and then, you know, giving my interview but hmm. she came to me i told her that uh i have been to hyderabad consulate before i've been rejected here i want to give my best chance and the, the coordinator she didn't listen to me she was like they don't remember you you hmm. stand in the line that you are being assigned to give your best i don't think she will reject you this time yeah. that's what she told me <laughs> okay that would have and encouraged you i think yeah ma'am two two to three people they were in ahead of me in the 36 counter, everyone got rejected and I got approved. Wow. So it was kind of nerve wracking because I thought, like, she's very strict, she's not approving anyone. Maybe right. this is the rejection counter and all. Yeah. So after four rejections, even my case is a refusal case. So the cha- odds are very low of yeah. getting um, approved this time. But it happened because. Right. This time I was very confident, ma'am. I answered every question. Not like an answer, but it was kind of a con- conversation in between two people. Yes. No, you were very prepared, uh, no doubt in that. Because when we did the mock, I think just one day before your interview, or two days, yes, right? Ma'am. Did the mock. One day, one day. One day before. So, I mean, I could see that you're calm, you're prepared. Uh, yes. Like, one can just tell, right? Okay, this person this time is prepared. <laughs> Whatever yes. happens or not, we don't know. But at least you're prepared. That much we can be sure of. Yes, ma'am. That was good. All right. Thank you so much, Vivek. I know you're on holiday, so I don't want to <laughs> disturb you too much. Not but an issue, it's ma'am. really, really helpful. Uh, uh, no, I want to thank you, actually. Motivation. I want yeah. to thank you, actually, for, you know, allocating your time in the very end of this, you know, preparation. Like, next day was my interview, and I was not uh, sure if I could book a slot with you. But uh, even though you showed up, you gave me enough confidence. It gave me a good boost in my confidence ma'am actually when you said that i was prepared and all but it took me like four rejections to get this confident in my own abilities in my own speaking skills and all but i don't i but i feel like if i was in touch with you from the very first interview i might i might have secured it in my first attempt so it took me like three attempts to you know get right into the right track I mean, we can never, like they say, na, you can't connect the dots going backward. So it's exactly. fine. Whatever ends well is good. <laughs> you should think like. Thank you so much for watching this video. We do also have similar videos for other consulates. We have one for Mumbai and one for Delhi. So in case you're going to these locations, do check them out. And if you want us to make similar videos for Chennai and Kolkata, do comment below and let me know. Also, in the description box below, there are a lot of free resources to help you prepare. So do check them out. And like and again, a reminder that you can join our WhatsApp community so that we can help you in the preparation. Signing off for now, wish you all the best for your upcoming visa interview. We also have more useful content coming up. The next video is going to be a mock interview video. So this is going to be a mock interview where you can take the mock with me in a YouTube video. 
So stay tuned for that and I'll see you soon. Bye.